We said today we will talk about programmable logic devices, uh, programmable logic arrays. We, we, we talked about programmable ROMs, programmable read only memories yesterday, last lecture. The use of programmable ROMs in design of combinational logic. The next PLD, the programmable logic device, which we will consider is called a programmable logic array. Written as PLA for short. Programmable logic array. See, when uh, the the ROM based design or PROM based design, as the number of inputs increases, the number of min terms increases. Not linearly. Is the power of two, right? So it's sort of an exponential increase. The size of the ROM depends on the number of inputs and the number of outputs, but as the number of inputs increases, the size increases exponentially. Of course, as the number of outputs increase, as the number of outputs increases, it only the size increases only linearly because it is the width of the word that you write in each location. The width of the word that you write in each location is the output. The number of words in the ROM is the number of min terms for that particular number of inputs which will increase to power to, to the integer power of 2. So, what happens is when the uh, system is a little complex, let us not say complex, big, large number of inputs and outputs, the size of the ROM becomes very large. Earlier times, the size was an important criterion because it was expensive to make more bigger and bigger ROMs. Because even now, if you can save on the size of the ROM, you can save. Why should you unnecessarily spend silicon if you can do it in a smaller chip? The size also in, it takes the lot of memory space, a lot of space in the IC which you do not want to do because you would rather like to use that space for some other function. And anyway, switching uh, activity increases because of that the power consumption everything. So, it is a case there is a case for making the ROM as small as possible from point of view everything cost and power saving and etcetera. But then if the number of inputs are given there is no way we can reduce it. We have to we have to generate all the min terms possible and then find out which of the min terms have to need to be combined for each of those outputs. But in practice we find that any output, any especially in the system is large, large number of inputs and outputs, 
we find that the given output is only dependent on a few min terms. Very rarely is it a combination of a large number of min terms. So, that means, even though we are generating all the min terms for a given number of inputs, each of the outputs will use only a few of them. That means, many min terms go unutilized or unused. That means, we are generating more terms than required in the design. So, thereby came the concept of programmable logic arrays. In the programmable logic arrays, the AND array, so you remember the programmable read only memory PROM based solution, we had an AND array which produces all min terms and an OR array which was used to program the exact min terms that are required for a particular output. Now, if you can make the AND array also programmable, instead of having a fixed AND array to generate all the possible min terms, if I make a fixed program programmed programmable AND array and the programmable OR array, then I can reduce the number of min terms to be generated depending on the given function for that given function for that given set of outputs look at the outputs to be generated and only those gen out those min terms will generate do not even generate the other outputs other min terms meaning I can reduce the hardware. This is the concept of programmable logic array. So, given as a block diagram supposing these are the number of min terms I mean inputs 3 In the previous case, in the OR based solution, the ROM based solution, we would have generated M0 to M7, which would be combined in a OR array to make different functions. Here, what I will do is, I will generate a fewer, let us say 4, that depends on how many and what are those terms, it will depend on the function to be implemented, the outputs, and those will be combined in the OR array. So, this is programmable, this is also programmable. Earlier, this was fixed and this was programmable. In this case, this is also programmable, this, this is programmable and this is also programmable. And again, we will have the the question is I need to reduce the given function or given set of functions in order to decide which are the min, which are the terms which I need to generate. They need not be min terms. Now, I will have to do a simplification which was not done in the case of ROM array. In the ROM implementation I said you do not have to do any simplification all you need is a truth table. If you get the truth table for each combination whether the output is present or not, if you know then you generate all those min terms anyway and then tie those min terms together which are going to make an output for a particular output. Now, in this case I will do an extra step of simplification using corner map and generate only the smallest number of terms which are required to make all the functions possible to realize all the given output functions. So, since of calling them m 0, m 1, m 2, m 3 they are not min terms anymore they are product terms. So, I will have to call them p 0, p 1, p 2, p 3 which are again functions of the inputs. So, if we call this A B C as we always do P 0, P 1, P 2, P 3 will be functions of A B C. Now, the step is to get the function, get the specification, get its truth table the ROM implementation directly go from truth table to the hardware. In the PLA implementation, programmable logic array implementation, you go through a step of minimization and reduce the functions to a set of min terms, I mean set of product terms which are necessary to implement those functions given F1, F2, F3, F4. For example, in this case it is F1, F2, F3. 
So F1, F2, F3, also I will just put generally F. Okay, one more advantage is, if some of those terms for F1 and F2, product terms are common, I need not generate it two times. I can only generate it once. You can also generate, in fact, I can make a more efficient design by having as many common terms as possible. Do you understand? So, when, it, when simplifi simplifying F1, F2, F3, Carla maps, I will not have the reduction in gate in mind. Reduction in the product terms is an important issue. At the same time, I will keep in mind, is it possible to have same min terms, same product terms appear in more than one output function, which means I can share the output for the product terms in different outputs. So, also taking into account, take into account shared product terms. So, let us do a simple example of three variables. I have I have three variables a, b, c. So, I will have three functions f 1, f 2, f 3 to be implemented with three variables a, b, c. Let us say it is uh, my two tables are given as follows f 1, a, b, c is sigma min term. Zero to only two min terms are required. F two A B C would be sigma min terms zero three four three four five seven. Now, if I draw the corner map for each one of them, corner map for F1, zero, one, two, three. So, this is what? A bar, A bar. Pardon? A bar C bar. Yes. Why are you hesitating? F2 would be zero, one, two, three, four. Is that what I said? Zero three four. Okay. This will be this will be what? B bar C bar or A bar B C. And I have a third function zero, one, two, three, four, five. This is the F three, isn't it? What will this be? Uh, this would be A B bar plus. B C. So, how many different min terms or uh, product terms are there in to implement all of these functions? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I need 5 product terms. Instead of generating 8 min terms and combining them with 
0 2 here, 0 3 4 here, 3 4 5 7 here. I can generate 5 product terms which are even simpler than the 5 7 8 min terms because min term will require a bar b bar c bar 3 variables always. Here this requires only 2, this requires only 2, this requires only 2, 2, only here it requires 3. So, I have not only I am going to use less number of AND gates, so this programmable AND array will have less number of fewer AND gates and size of this AND gates is smaller compared to the previous implementation using ROM. So, I will have here now, I give my ABC as inputs to the AND array and get out of this the product terms P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, where this I will call P0, this I will call P1, call P2, and then my R array would, have, would tie there are three outputs This is my F1, 2F3, F1, F1 will be P0, F2 would be P1, P2, F3 will be P3, P4. Now, I have the implementation of the function. The size is now smaller for the same function, four functions. If I had used a ROM, I would have used a two or eight min terms and four outputs. So, size would have been two power three times what? Two power three times size of ROM is. No, but you do not say 24 because you do not know how many rows, how many columns, how many. You do not multiply the whole thing and so 2 power 3 times 3 that you have to say like that. Only then you know you can say take a ROM with 3 inputs and 3 outputs, 3 address lines and 3 pro, pro, uh, output terms. So, size would have been 2 power 3, here it is 2 power 3, it is not 2 power 3, it is 5, 5 product terms times 3. So, you have number of bits the size in bits is smaller here and each of the and the decoder the, the decoder which does the min term combination from the and array is also smaller now in case of the because it requires to do only 5 terms rather than 8 terms with varying sizes and gates. Now, if I want to add one more function to this f4. Suppose I want to now have a 4 output. So, I need to simplify this map also. This would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, what is this? 
So, what is this F 4 s B bar C bar or B C is it not B bar C bar or B C is that right and B bar C bar is already there P 1 B C is already there P 4. So, it is same as P 3 plus P 4. So, with this min terms which are already generated min with these product terms are already generated four product terms already generated. Okay, thank you. P 1, P 4. With the product terms are already generated P 1 and P 4 I have now we able to get one more output that is why I drew this a little larger box. So, I can insert this a 4 which should be P 1 P 4. This is what I mean by common product terms have if you have common product terms between two functions you do not have to generate it. This term P 4 and P 1 and P 4 need not be generated again because they are already there all you have to do is to use them. So, we have the advantage the size is smaller the and array size is smaller and number of gates not only the number of gates, but the size of those gates individual gates number of inputs to each of these gates. This will be significant if the number of inputs are large which is practice which is the case in the, in the case of practical systems. Just because you take a simple example the class you can be completed in a short time draw any diagram on the board does not mean all systems are like this there is only conceptual diagrams. In a real design you will have many more variables input variables and so the number of product terms if you want to do a ROM based design it in, in, increases exponentially explodes. So, there is real advantage because however big the system may be number of inputs number of outputs a given output will be dependent always on a few inputs not more than the, a few inputs at a given time will be localized inputs for that particular output and then the another output will move and then one more setup. So, why generate everything every time and only use a few each time that was the concept of programmable array logic. The size of this would be here you have to say size is 4 product terms I should have the capacity to have 3 inputs. So, how do you express the capacity here? here the ROM you express the capacity as 2 power n times m where n is the number of inputs and m is the number of outputs. So, if you want to do a ROM based design do not do a multiplication of 2 power n times m then it is you do not know you cannot go to the shop and ask for a 2 power 3 times 4 is 8 times 4 32 you cannot go and say give me a 32 bit ROM you can say give me an 8 by 3 ROM or 3 input 3 output ROM like that in this case I should give the number of inputs number of product terms it should make and the number of outputs. So, I should give here 3 inputs 5 product terms I should be able to generate 5 product terms using these 3 inputs and then I need 4 outputs this will be how the size will be determined. Yeah, yeah, you have to. I am just giving you an example of how your function can be shared. That is why I have these three which are different. I cannot add anything for any time, even now. The adding is not after you designed. This was the requirement, and now this is another requirement. I am showing you the same IC can also do the job provided we have one more output. Manufacturer will give you general sizes. Manufacturer will give you 3 input, 5 product terms, 4 output scheme. 5 you will have a different, of course, you cannot have all possible inputs and all possible product terms, all possible outputs, infinite number of combinations will not give you. We will give you a reasonable choice. Give you I have I have product 4 product in 4 term, 4 input term PIL are available, programmable logic arrays are available, PLAs are available, 6 are available, 8 are available, 12 are available, 16 are available, you choose. Similarly, they will say for this 6 I have variety of product terms 4, 8, 6, 10 and for each one of them they will also give me 4 output. So, there will be a whole variety of out commercial products available you have to choose the best one 
It is not that you go and get a shop for a particular device that you have in mind. I should have a, I will put it the other way. I should have a programmable array logic which will at least have three inputs, at least can generate five product terms and at least have four outputs. The smallest within that restriction constraints I will buy. Do you understand? Supposing there is no three input uh, product, uh, programmable array logic is available, programmable logic array PLA is available, I will use a four input. Supposing four input is available, I will take that. I will take that and use three of those inputs. How do I, how do, I do this job? Even the RAM the same thing, I cannot say 7 input RAM, 2 power 7 size it may not be available, standard inputs 4, 8, size of the RAM is not available at your will, there are fixed sizes, you have to choose them, if you cannot fit it in this smaller RAM, go for a bigger RAM, that means, it is not like a notebook you want to buy from a store, you want 100 pages or 200 pages, you want, can you buy a 147 pages notebook? because the teacher is going to teach 147 pages something, it is not possible. There is always when you, when, you, when, you when you take a package, uh, you want to go buy Coca Cola also, you have, to do this. you have to take a 6 pack or 4 pack, you know you cannot have a 5 pack, it is always the case. Then how do we know what is the product that each product You are supposed to do the design before you go to the shop, the problem is given to you. I have a problem with three inputs, four outputs with this following two tables. I sit down, take a piece of paper and pencil, if you have one, reduce this min terms, product terms, and then come up with a list of product terms for each output. Then I come with this table, PLA table, input A, B, C, product terms to be generated, and product terms will be combined for F1, F2, F2. They call the PLA table, program logic array table. You have to generate a PLA table which will give you inputs, the product terms, suppose I can say PLA table will look like this in this case, I will write the PLA table for this function, PLA table would be P0, F1, F2, F3, F4, P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, right, we have only this much, so F1 will have only P0. F2 would be P1 and P2, correct? F3 is going to be, tell me, F3 is P3, P4, F4 would be P1 and P4. Now I know, so I need to, inputs are given. For the given system inputs are given, PLA table, I will also note P0, P1, P2, P3, P4 are functions of three variables. Even though you may not use all the three variables, they are functions of three variables, A, B, C. This is the table I have gotten after designing it. Then this is the information from where I start, I know, I know that I need three inputs, I know that I need five product terms and I know that I need four outputs. So, I will go to a electronic component store, ask for a PLA with three inputs, uh, five product terms and four outputs. That fellow will say no, I do not have one, I have four inputs, six product terms and four outputs, so do you want to take it? And I have to take it if I want to really do the design, but I really do not do that. Actually, you do a there is a catalog available, the big used to be big thick book when you were students, now it is all in web. You go to the web and say this is my requirement, they will spit out the, the part number of different manufacturers, and then you choose that person who is and then that particular device which is. You say this is the minimum requirement and uh, give all the possible combinations. Then they will give you, there is one like this, four input, uh, six product terms and four outputs, would you like to take it? Then you say yes and then you probably today you can order it online and uh, give your credit card number and uh, only thing they have not invented is to deliver the IC through the computer. <laughs> all other things are there, somebody has to deliver it to the courier, that is probably will come out sometime. 
You open your <laughs> computer and you can pick up the part that you want. Probably that is left for you people to research on. <laughs> when you come to, do you understand now the problem clear and still confused? You are not convinced. Anybody else has questions on this? Everything is programmable. Product terms are programmable and outputs are programmable. What is programmable is which of the product terms you combine is programmable. I can have up to 5 terms in my each of my outputs. And that can be any combination. Any combination. I can have F1 is equal to P0 plus P1 plus P2 plus P3 P4. Again F2 is equal to P3 P0 plus P1. Of course, you, do. you won't do it. You don't want all the 4 outputs to be same. In principle, I can have each of those outputs have 5 product terms. But it so requires my combination, my, my specification requires only this type of things. Up to 5 inputs I can connect. Each of the product term can go as an input to the OR gate for each of the functions. There is the programmability similar to the ROM programmability. ROM programmability understood the last lecture. Same, there is no change. There is an additional programmability here instead of getting M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, M7, and if M16 it is 4 input. I am now going to have P0, P1, P2, P3 stop because I need only 4 product terms or P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5 stop. So, how many product terms you need in order to with taking into account common terms as possible. So, I will do a simple, sim in fact I we talked about it in the design of a combination logic also. When multiple output combination logic you design for same set of inputs, you will try to share the in terms to the extent possible. Sharing the terms will give you reduced hardware, is it not? Supposing I have 4 inputs and 7 outputs in the case of binary to 7 segment decoder, there if I can share some of those outputs for each of those terms for each of those outputs, that extent I do not have to reproduce that gate again. Same concept here. If you even if you leave the sharing part out. I do not have to generate 7 product terms, I only generate as many min terms, as many product terms as required for my implementation. So, to that extent there is a saving in the number of AND gates and the number of inputs to each of those AND gates. Earlier in the ROM case, I needed to have 8 AND gates and each of those AND gates had to have 3 inputs. So, when you take a 2 input or 3 input case, it is very hard for me to justify looks trivial and marginal, but as I said all practical system, many practical system will have huge number of inputs and uh, you want 16 input combination logic, what will be the size of the ROM? Number of words, number of words is 2 power 16 which is 64 k. Now, if I can produce the whole thing in 15 product terms, what a difference from 2 power k to from uh, from 64 k to 50 the dramatic change in the hardware requirement okay and that is the ex that is why it's called programmable programmable not in any other sense i choose my product terms instead of blindly taking all the min terms and here again i choose the product terms to be go into the each function that way it's programmable and this programmable so, programmable and unprogrammable Now, there is one more uh, product of the same type programmable logic device which is called for some reason they did not they can't think sometime they did not know how to name it first they call it programmable read only memory because all the possible inputs can be given and then all the then they said logic array is programmable then instead of changing this programmable array logic array they change it to programmable array logic they interchange the two terms two words the last the third variety is called programmable array logic pil the other one is pla this pil what is the need for a third variety here I need in the ROM I have two one programming feature. Once I know the size of the design, number of inputs, number of outputs, I go ask for a ROM of two 
2 power 7 times 8 or 2 power n times m get it and I know all the min terms are available and all I have to do the programming is combine those min terms for each of those outputs m min outputs. It was easy to do it even though you were hardware uh, inefficient, it is a hardware inefficient design, efficiency of the hardware is not good. So, they thought we will save on the hardware and they said I will do two step programming, first I will choose what are the and product terms I need and then choose it and then I will combine them. So, two step programming again when the size is very large number of inputs and number of outputs are large number of product terms are large, like 50 I sold you know 16 inputs 50 outputs. First of all you have to reduce them properly and then you have to find if possible as many common terms as possible of course everything is programmed nowadays in computer in that sense the other programming computer program instead of manual labor anything which is repetitive nature checking for example, computer does better than us because it does not get tired of it. We get tired and make mistakes, the number of things you do is very large. But anything which innovates, anything which when you need to apply your mind, you are better than computer hopefully, right. So, that one were not also people are saying very inefficient. So, I need to do this balance this and balance that and then I may always not end up with a efficient design. So, I ended up with an inefficient design. Some of the programmable array logic is all market driven, what should remember electronics or any industry for that matter, even pharmaceutical industry. It is market driven, it is a low cost uh, drug for a cure or something, it gets popular even though everybody else wants it, but at least it is affordable and people will buy it. So, market driven, so when the they thought when ROM solution was costly quote unquote costly those days, this days is not costly, but it is more area, why do you want to spend more area and power. They thought this solution will catch on, but it was failure, the market point of view it was a failure, lot of people had difficulty in using this. They had to generate software to do this all this, whatever I am saying it will be done, Let's reduce it, find out the min terms, uh, product terms, common product, all those I am saying, but in a large system all of those things will be done computerized automatically. So, they found it difficult to write efficient software for that. So, there are no not many takers. So, they thought that is like giving too much freedom. Earlier we had restriction, programmability was restricted. The only difficulty was we had too many things and we did not want more, we did not want so many min terms because many of them were not used. So, they gave another degree of freedom, two degrees of freedom was given. First degree of freedom was the ion gate selection programmable, second degree of freedom was the OR gate selection. But we know as happens in our country, too much freedom also spoils the whole thing, right? Everybody clamors. So, they found it difficult to have people work with this with comfort. They put a restriction now again back to square one. I will not give you two degrees of freedom, I will give you one degree of freedom, but the ROM exercise was not good because we had wastage of hardware. This is a inefficiency in hardware, ROM was easy to use. This is efficient in hardware, I will combine these two by taking the one degree of freedom from the from this. So, leave the AND array combination to you and OR array gets fixed. So, that is the programmable, programmable, programmable AND array and fixed OR array. So, now in a ROM connection again I will do the same thing, I will do P0, P1, P2, P3 as functions of F, A, B, C, I will generate the product terms required, but, the, but what will happen is they are prefixed, it will say F1 will always be P0, P0, P1, you have no choice on that. So, you have to somehow get to a P0, P1, F1 to reduce to P0, P1. If it is not possible, you cannot use this chip. You have to go for a bigger one. And F2 may be P2, P3. Or let us leave it 2 now to make it simpler by drawing since I want to use the same drawing 
I fix which and terms, which product terms go into each of the OR gates that is fixed, no ne it is not negotiable. You cannot negotiate the product terms you can combine in order to make an output. But what you can negotiate is the combination of those product terms itself, the generation of those product terms itself. It is not a min term, it is a product term. You know the difference between product term and a min term. A min term will have all the variables A, B, C, D, E, F along with this uh, complements, whereas the product term will only have those literals which are required for that particular implementation. So, now uh, size of the product, size of the ROM will be decided by. Now, there is no question of common product terms now. That is why I removed this common product term restriction. So, I do not have to look for whether something is common between this and this, because even if it is common, I have no way of connecting this and this. Supposing P1 was common to F1 and F2, I cannot combine it because P1 only is fixed to F1, P2 is fixed to F2, I have to make P1 and P2 same, that means I have to regenerate it. I have to generate P1 once for this and once for this. I may call it P2 for convenience, I may call it P2, but I need to, if I, if the same and term, same product term appears in two outputs, I need to generate it for each of those outputs. Is that clear? There is no question of sharing. That takes the burden off, you know. When the burden is removed from you, you are happy. At what cost? A little less efficient, that is okay. Hardware is not a big deal as we said today. So, this is what a AND array is fixed, uh, I mean programmable OR array is fixed. So, I will use the same example except I am going to remove my F4 because F4 I just wanted to show you how to exploit the common terms. There is no question of exploitation here because if I want to produce no P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, I need to generate 5 product terms called P0 to P4. I have to combine F1 as P0, this is what it is going to be. Each of these product terms, each of these outputs, let us say, ha has two product terms as inputs. I am going to have an extra product terms called P5. I will redesignate this because F1 can only be P0 or P1. There is only one term required for P0. I will have to you not use the other term, other input will not be used. So, P0 will be used, this will have to make 0 because I am not going to combine anything. If I do not combine anything, because the OR is programmable by AND is programmable by us. When I program the AND, I will only program for P0, I will not program for the second term of this. So, I am going to redesignate it as P2 and P3 because they belong to for the second output. I am going to redesignate it as P4, P3 at P4 and P5. So, these two will be F1, F2, F3. So, P0 plus 0, is it not? So, the second term here is not being used. I have only one term requirement, but I have a two input gate, I cannot do anything about it. I will not use the second input. Here I will use the two second two inputs. Now, if I want F4, which was originally thought as what? What is F4 again? E bar C bar or P C, is that right? Is that right what we wrote a little earlier? In which case what is B bar C bar is P2? I cannot use P2 here. I have to redesignate this P6 and P7 and again generate P6 and P7, even though P5 
even though P2 and P5 are available, I cannot use them because I do not have these inputs tied to the next. So, if I have a fourth AND gate or gate with two inputs, those have to be again programmed for the same variables which are already there. Then it becomes less efficient beyond that. So, how will you define the size of this? The size of this would be defined a little bit more careful. Size would be 3 inputs Four outputs or three outputs. There's no do, there's no contention on these two inputs and outputs. There's no contention. But I need two OR gates as inputs to each of these two AND products. So I need to have total of six product terms, two each for. 2 for each output. Of course, in a standard way of writing it, they will say 2, 2, 2 product terms. When they write 2, 2, 2 product terms, I have 3 outputs. First product, first output will have 2 product terms, second output will have 2 product terms. So, I can have 2, 3, 3 or 2, 3, 3, 2. That I can have 4 outputs. First and first can be 2 inputs. Second can be three, third can be three, fourth can be two. So again, you go through the manual if you want to do it manually or you want to do it in computer. Give the input requirement. Here is even simpler. I don't have to verify, worry, worry about the commonality of these product terms. I am given the function f4, f2, f3, f4. All functions are given. I am told there are four variable functions, or three variable functions, or five variable functions, whatever it is. I make simplification using corner map and then list them all out and how to find supposing I end up saying I need product term for F1 I need 3 product terms, F2 I need 4 product terms, for F3 I need 3, F4 2. Then I will say give me an in function with 3 inputs or 4 inputs, 4 outputs, 1, 2 input, uh, 2 input, 2, 3 inputs, 1, 4 inputs. It may not be their exact match. Then you go and get the nearest possible size and do not use like in this case, I have two inputs out of which I am not able to use P1 because my F1 requires only P1, P0, P1 is not used. Like that I may have another product term in which there will be three, another output or gate with the three product terms, I may have only two, I may have to put one as unused. So, the the point is the design becomes simpler because there is only one programming step namely in the OR gate choice and the AND gate choice the product term selection OR gate gets fixed. The second burden of having to identify some common terms becomes less. So, this is caught up very well. So, programmable array logic is the standard design way of PLD design today. So, this is an evolution I talked to you about PROM design then PLA design and then PIL design historically it evolved in this uh, this way, but what is now popular if you want to do a combinational design using PA uh, programmable logic devices the most preferred project programmable logic device for combinational um, design today is programmable array logic or PAL and of course did I say PAL that is right not PLA because many times I get switch between these two PAL. So, it is a programmable array logic and as I said there is some problems, but then they say it is simple because of simplicity and uh, it is also efficient if you know what exactly you want you can choose the one which is earlier we had a variety. Sometimes when you have variety of problems you make an inefficient choice here is an efficient choice is possible. So, what you have to see is again a little, little, little more into this the most widely used or the most uh, popular programmable logic device namely PAL programmable array logic. We look at it a little more closely and see what are the various types of PALs available and whether we can how to specify what we need there are standard procedures for specifying what we need all that we'll, we need one more lecture on this to complete the programmable logic devices we will see it in the next lecture.
Thank you.